It's time for the one and only, the premier, the only official podcast of Pro Rodeo. Your shoot bosses are ready, so let's give it a go and talk some rodeo. Welcome into the Shoot Bosses podcast, the official podcast of Pro Rodeo. As always, Tanner Barth, Tracy Rink, we're here with another great episode for you here, Tracy, and uh, we're going to have a chance to sit down with what I consider the best bareback rider of all time. He has the most world titles anyways. We're going to sit down and chat with uh, Casey Field. Yeah, I mean, there, there's no none better in bareback riding. Great, just an outstanding person. I've known him since I've been here, but I mean, he was doing great things far before I got here. He's followed in the footsteps of his fa- Hall of Fame father, Louis Fields, and it's just amazing. It's just amazing that he was able to have such a great career, and it's even more amazing to me that we were able to get him on because he's a busy man now in retirement. Yeah, he went into retirement, got all these businesses going. He's in warehouses across the country, so we'll sit down and uh, appreciate Casey, his time, and we'll chat with him a little bit about what life has been like since he got out of the arena. As we always do here on the Shoot Bosses, Tracy, we get things kicked off with our Pro Rodeo props. This is where we give a shout out to someone in Pro Rodeo doing great things, and this one is, I'm not sure if we talked about it when it initially happened after Fort Worth, but our Pro Rodeo props is going to go to pickup man Josh Edwards. You know, Josh has been around the sport of rodeo for a long time, 25 years. He worked the NFR two times, 2014, 2023, and he's just done so many great things for the sport of rodeo, and we can't appreciate his time in the sport enough. Yeah, and he, he retired at Fort Worth because that's where it all started yeah. for him. I mean, he, he's a businessman. He's got a lot of businesses he does near near Waco and around Texas. He's still on the executive board here at the PRCA. Mm-hmm. Uh as a representative for some different members and just a great guy. He's always been approachable, always been answering his phone and he was great at what he did. I mean, you don't get selected to the NFR twice as a pickup man without being very good at what you do. And he appreciated the sport. He was ready to do more things with these kids. As we've noticed, these guys, yeah, these, yeah. these guys get older and your kids, you know, they only grow up once. And I mean, you just don't want to look back and say, what if I was there for them doing this? You don't want to start missing stuff that's really important to him. So uh, it's, it's great that he had such a fabulous career, and he's obviously still going to stay in touch with the rodeo world, but uh, can't say enough good things about him. Yeah, started his career in 1999, and then in 2023, his final year named the PRCA Pickup Man of the Year. So congrats on a great career, Joshua. We appreciate everything you've done for the sport of rodeo. Time for our short round, and Tracy, we uh, talked a little bit about it last weekend when we had uh, the Fishers on to, to talk mm-hmm. about their event just a little bit. But how about a shout-out to Doug Farr. He captures the M.M. Fisher Jr. Uh, Memorial Steer Roping title and, you know, what he said was kind of surprising fashion. Yeah, I mean, he's not a really a full-time steer roper. He, no. He'd been to the NFR uh Four, five times uh, as a tie-down roper. He won 12 rounds at the NFR as a tie-down roper. He's an accomplished tie-down roper. He got into steer roping about five years ago. And honestly, of all the 96 guys that were there, he might have been in the 90s to pick as the winner. And that's <laughs> nothing against him. I mean, yeah. it was a who's who of steer roping. I mean, m- you know, numerous world champions and guys that are full-time guys. So for him to pull that off, I'm sure he was shocked, which he did express. So maybe that gives him the urge to keep going. He won almost seven grand. I mean, maybe that gives him to push to go down the road a little more. Yeah, and he said, you know, that seven grand that he won was more than he'd won in like the last five to ten years of his career. You know, went to the NFR four times and, you know, did all that as a tight end roper. He says, you know, maybe I'll try my hand at, uh, at steer roping. And, uh, you know, so far so good. And maybe, maybe we got a surprise NFSR guy for yeah, you to check out. Yeah, and steer roping, the thing is, is, I told people, it's so much different with the horsemanship of it. I mean, tie-down ropers can become really good steer ropers. Mm -hmm. T. Woolman, Tough Cooper come to mind right off the top of my head. But it takes time because you have to have great horses in steer roping, not that you don't in tie-down. It's just a different type of horse. And so it takes time and practice. I mean, you and I talked about Shad trying to do it. Mm -hmm. And Shad wanted to do it, but you have to invest a lot of time into trying to do it successfully. It's a different event, for sure. Yeah, and... It, it, you don't have as many events, but th- once again, you have so many good guys at a smaller number of events. The chances to win money are not as great, maybe. So to have Doug win a huge event like this, the most steer ropers ever at a standalone event, 96. Yeah, I mean, crazy. That's insane. So 
shout out to him, and hopefully it's for bigger and better things and still we'll be moving forward for him. Yeah, we'll definitely keep our eye on Doug and see if he can't make a run towards the NFSR here in 2024. And as we did our last podcast, Tracy, we'll continue to put this out there so people know it's coming up. But we'll have the third annual Resist All Rookie Roundup uh, getting ready to come our way. That'll be happening down in Fort Worth. And I just can't wait for that event. We touched on it a little bit earlier. The top 15 rookies in each event going head-to-head for a chance to you know call themselves the, the Rookie Roundup winner and also uh, get a little bit of a head start on winning that Rookie of the Year title. Yeah, I mean, it's just looking back at something like that would mean a lot to me if I were a rookie and was well, able to win it because you can only win it once. It's the one buckle that they yeah, say you can only win yeah, once. Yeah, and the Rookie of the Year is obviously the one buckle. So there's so much involved with that. They've really stepped up with Resist All and Cowboy Channel, you know, helping them out with media training and swag bag and stuff to go down the road. So it, it means a lot to those guys, and they get recognized. I mean, it's their event. It's it's their specialty event. So and the guys that come out of there, you know, ultimately are – some of those guys might be NFR guys yeah. maybe this year or very soon in the future. Yeah, it's the future of rodeo that we keep our eye on down there. $100,000 purse. That'll be at the Fort Worth Stockyards uh, Coliseum down there, run April 26th to the 27th. So if you want tickets, you can go to our website. I'm sure Resist All has it up on their website as well to check all that out. Just about time for our eight question segment, Tracy. And this time we're going to sit down with, let me list off all these awards the reigning PRCA clown, barrelman of the year, comedy act of the year. Coors man in the can, Mr. John Harrison. Yeah, John's a great guy. I mean, I've known him since I've been here, and John's just a fantastic guy. He's clowned, you know, at all the big rodeos. Obviously, at the NFR, he's taken home a haul the last few years. I mean, and and he's a funny act. I mean, I've seen him, and and I I don't, we don't, you know, judge those acts, and we're not (laughs) part of the awards committee, but he does a great job. I, I remember one time he told me this crazy story that, he went out to his trailer when he was switching clothes to his act, and I'm trying to remember. It was part of the stories I did a few years back, and a guy was breaking into his trailer, <laughs> and he had to get in a fight, and he threw him around, and then they, he held him at bay until the cops came. So, I mean, it's all part of the, you know, part of the act, and I, he just does a great job. I mean, it, to me, it would be hard doing that stuff to walk away from it like it seemed like you'd always be on so to speak yeah and he's not he's not as much on when you talk to him in person so hopefully people get a kick out of these eight questions yep here's the king of clowning around is your eight question segment with john harrison favorite rodeo ogden utah favorite restaurant anything mexican who wins a fight between a grizzly bear and a gorilla Grizzly bear. What was the make of your first car? Ford F-150. Favorite movie? Uh, Open Range. Favorite comedian? Larry the Cable Guy. If not rodeo, what? Accountant. Favorite act you do? Ooh, uh, comedy trick riding or trick riding. That's it. Thanks so much, man. And Trace, I could tell that you and John had a lot of fun. Was he sitting outside of his trailer? Where was he at there? I think he was at the Houston. I, I yeah. think he was at Houston. I think he's got some stuff in the works that uh, maybe it's in the future. But those guys are always on the road. I, I was shocked. I thought usually when those guys want to do this, they're either in their trailer or in their hotel room. He was actually walking around on the rodeo grounds, and I was like, ugh, because we get worried about the Internet connections. We know that. But, yeah, he had a few moments. Because when we try to explain these guys, I I tell them this is, like, going to take five minutes. I'm going to ask you eight eight questions, and you you give me eight quick answers. So, yeah, John's a great guy, and he's won all these awards, and who knows if he's going to win more. I I like his chances to win more awards in 2024. Yeah, we really appreciate John sitting down with us, and that's going to send us to a break here on the Shoe Bosses, but don't you go anywhere. We'll have much more coming your way. We'll do our Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame Spotlight. Did you know our viewer question? And then we'll sit down with Casey Field at the back half of the show. We're right back after this. Farm life means always hoping for the best, but planning for uncertainty. You have to be ready for the next everything, the next dawn, the next season, the next harvest, the next technology, the next challenge, and the next generation. No matter what comes your way, we can help keep you ready for the next. We're 
We're back here on the Shoot Bosses for segment number two of our podcast. We hope you all enjoy our podcast. Tracy and I put a lot of effort into this thing. And, uh, you know, we just want to bring you all that inside information that we know, you know, being here at the PRCA headquarters. And it's been a ton of fun so far, Trace. Yeah, we try to get great guests. We try to get insider information. And, I mean, I think we've done a fabulous job. This has been a work in progress for years. And it's crazy that we've done almost, what, 25 episodes. We're we're chucking along here. We're on episode five of uh, season Season two two. already. Yeah, so it's it's been a blast, and I hope everybody enjoys uh, enjoys it. And please go go to all the social platforms and enjoy the shoe bosses. Yeah, no doubt about it. Enough of the blah, 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 promoting ourselves. Let's get into promoting other people. We start with our Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame spotlight. And, Tracy, this one is 1999 Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame inductee Mel Highland. And we have to go up to Canada for this one because Mel was a dominant. You know, he joined the Pro Rodeo ranks in 1966, and then he went on to win two world titles, went to the National Finals Rodeo 11 times, just one of the the all-time greats, and kind of started to set that curve a little bit for Canadian saddle bronc riders. Yeah, I mean, look at look did, at our yeah. saddle bronchers we have now. I mean, Rod Hay obviously was part of that. You start, it's like you start following the footsteps of guys and. The Vin of Saddle Bronc has a lot of Canadian ties to it. I mean, the history of it all the way into today. And I'm sure Rod Hay and guys like that looked up to Mel. Mm-hmm. I mean, and you see what he can do because it's a different thing that so you have to leave Canada to come to the States. Yeah. And obviously, it's almost like you have to get a new cell phone. You have, and then cell phones are different. <laughs> there's but, a lot that goes but, into but it. But there's a lot that goes into it. There's not. It's not a simple, oh, I'm just going to go rodeo in America. I mean, <laughs> and those guys love rodeo in Canada, but they can't make a living like they can in the PRCA uh, by just rodeo in Canada. So I, Mel was a fantastic rider. I mean, set the set the bar high for a lot of guys that followed in his footsteps. Yeah, and we mentioned he won those world titles 1972, 1976. And in 72, you know, he did something that we've since seen Cowboys do, but he became the, the first uh, saddle bronc rider to win a Canadian title and a PRCA world title in 72. And, you know, since then, Obviously, Zeke Thurston's kind of kind of held that title here for the last couple of years as a guy to do both. Yeah, and the crazy thing about Zeke is Zeke was good like seven, eight years ago, and then he's like wine. He's just gotten better and better <laughs> and better. I mean, you, there's so many good saddle broncos that riders that we deal with today, and I, I, I didn't think Zeke would get this much better as his career moved along. I mean, I knew he was a great rider. He's a multiple-time world champion, but all of a sudden it's like, He's heading towards the all-time yeah, great. Yeah, something clicked, and I don't know what that was necessarily, but he's 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 obviously a first ballot Hall of Famer. Look at his stats. But I didn't see that a few years ago, and now all of a sudden he's one of the best ever. And yeah. he, he's, he's in the mix. He's still in his prime, in mm-hmm. my opinion. I mean, I'm not the aficionado on all that, but he's healthy and he's in his prime. I mean, He's got, I think, more titles to win. Yeah, no doubt about it. And he kind of sets the curve for some of those Canadian saddle bronc riders to what they want to be and what they want to accomplish in their careers. It's time for our Did You Know segment. Tracy, I'm going to let you handle this one. I usually throw out the Did You Knows, but uh, you cook this one up and uh, share the share the factoid here with all of our uh, listeners and viewers. Well, tie-down roper Mike Johnson holds a PRCA record for most qualifications in his event and two with 23. Jeez. That, that's crazy considering how many great tie-down ropers we've had and how many great tie-down ropers that have had long careers in the PRCA. Multiple-time world champions. Mike never won a world championship, but he went to the NFR 23 times. His last six were from 2003 to 2008. Fantastic roper. I mean, made a living at it. I mean, it's incredible what he's done. He's done schools. He still ropes a little bit. I think he won an event. It was either last year or, or the year before. But I just can't imagine... 23 times because even a guy like Tough Cooper yeah. has done 15 times. Eight since he turned. And eight, we feel like he's been there forever. Right, he's yeah. 18 years old, and Shane Hanchi's done it 15 times, I believe, 14 or 15. And so you still have to go eight more. Yeah. I mean, and then you're you're approaching 40 if you're tough. You know, right around that. And and Mike was doing it at a high level for a long time. So kudos to him. And I don't think people realize that he. Yeah. When you guess tight end, think roping, oh, you know how many world titles is yeah, the guy? Or Fred yeah. Whitfield. I yeah. mean, guys, you names you throw out there. And so Mike Johnson, 23 qualifications, has the record in tight end roping for the PRCA. Yeah, that's crazy, no doubt about it. And uh, Mike, I'm sure, still around the sport of rodeo. You know, checking things out, and uh, you know, proud supporter of of what tight end ropers are doing now. It's time for our viewer question. This one's going to come from Tiffany on Facebook, and uh, this can be, you know, a contentious subject in the sport of rodeo. She wants to know uh, what does it mean when they say 
say you missed the mark out in rough stock events. You know, and this is kind of a hard one to explain. It's only in rough stock events, so you're talking saddle bronc and you're talking bareback riding. But when you come out of that chute, you know, that first jump that you're out of the chutes, a cowboy's feet must be above the point of the shoulder when the horse is uh, front feet hit the ground for the first time that first rear out of the chute and you know that can be tracy where our pro rodeo officials have a tough job yeah. you know because it can cost a guy a world title you know it can cost him a round check but you know that's something that they have to keep an eye on and some bigger rodeos don't have the mark out rolling you know they, they right. can roll them through so it becomes a little different it depends on what rodeo you're at and what the judges are looking for right and and in some level it, it's subjective it is. I, mean, it can be, yeah. I, I mean, it can be. So it, it, it's definitely a controversial rule. Sometimes it's more obvious than other times. Mm -hmm. I mean, and you hope that's the case if a guy does do that. Not that you would ever wish someone do, does that, but I mean, you hope it's more obvious than not because sometimes it's that gray area, especially at the NFR. I mean, I've yeah. seen guys lose world titles at the NFR because all they had to do is make a ride. 60 point ride. Missed you know, them out. Yeah. And missed them out. So there's so much at stake. And that goes back to nerves. I mean, we saw, remember when Jess Pope... Because all the Cowboys know they have to do this. Right, when yeah. Jess Pope won the world and yeah. Tim O'Connell was psyching him up. And, I mean, all those things are going through his mind. And the, <laughs> the last thing you want to do, you're, you're geared up. All you're you got to do up. is keep that left foot down. And, and it's yeah. something those guys have done a thousand times. Yeah, exactly. But then there's moments in time where, you know... Jack Nicholas misses a punt or whatever. Like, and you're also on an unpredictable animal that can, right. you know, cause you to miss your mark out. You right. Know? I mean, there's so many variables. So, yeah, it's definitely a, a point of contention at times, and we never like to see it happen. You never like to see guys lose because mm -hmm. of that. But it's just one of the rules in rodeo, like any other sport, that you just, you just roll with it. But you have to have rules that way to make yeah. it fair for everybody. Yeah, and so we really appreciate that question because we know we get a lot of new rodeo fans that maybe haven't, you know, looked at a rule book or saw a lot of these performances. And she just wanted to know, you know, I've seen somebody miss their mark out. And, you know, what does that mean? And so we appreciate that. And if you have any viewer questions, you can definitely send them in to us. Uh, we'll have all of your, you know, try to answer all of your questions. You just go hashtag the shoot bosses and uh, we'll try and bring them here on the show for you and uh, that kind of leads us into uh, into our next segment here and uh, you know we're talking about breaking rules we're talking about you know missing an opportunity on on making money one guy that's you know he's down right now that's that's buck and down he's, on his uh, luck yeah he's not having much success right now i think i saw him at skate america recently at a blackout skate he was trying to do the reverse skate some of this what is that buck like come on what is that that, got, that, that's weak. Yeah, I mean, with it, those old tennis shoes, like, like Skechers shoes, like trying to skate backwards. Come and if on, he's going to get back to where we need Buck to be, it's going to take a lot of his pro rodeo word of the day. Huh? What? What? Mommy? Mommy? Where am I? Where am I? Word of the day. Word of the day. I got it. Huh. Uh, uh. Word of the day. Part of my word of the day. Courage. What all rough stock riders and all PRCA contestants have to display to win checks and be a true cowboy. When it comes to courage, the only courage Buck has to show is when he's at the nightclub trying to get the phone number from the ladies. They always give me the number, and then I always hear this recording. The number you've reached been disconnected or is no longer in service. That has to be some kind of error. This is about as, about as bad as this mustache I'm sporting and this beard. Where am I? Cowboying is in our blood. Cowboying is in our bruises. It's in our rain-soaked jackets. In our calloused hands, tested by barbed wire and rope. Our mud-stained boots to the crown of our resist-all hat. You live out west for even the shortest time, and there's one thing you learn. You can't pretend out here. Resist all. We live it every day. Welcome back into the Shoot Bosses podcast, the official podcast of Pro Rodeo. And Tracy, we mentioned it off the top of the show. We're getting ready to sit down with a man that, uh, you know, has always had great insight in the sport of rodeo and the best bareback rider of all time. We're going to chat with Casey Field. Yeah, six-time world champion. No one's won more bareback titles than him. And not only, not only that, he's just a great person. I've known him since the times I've been here. And 
there's no better no better guy that I've dealt with than Casey Field and no better bareback rider in the history of the PRCA. Yeah, Casey's jumping on with us now. And uh, Casey, you're off into retirement. You know, we've had this Texas winter run, you know, going down the road. We haven't had a chance to chat with you and see you. I kind of miss chatting with you a little bit. What have you been up to uh, since you jumped into retirement here, man? Well, I appreciate you guys having me on, Tracy. Thanks for say, saying the nice things that you did. Good seeing you guys again. Yeah, I've, I've been missing seeing you guys also. Um, watching the rodeos on TV is a lot of fun, but uh, with retirement, um, life's got real, I guess you could say. Um, it's uh, It's been awesome, though. I've had weight lifted off my shoulders. Uh, I have a clear mind and uh, can see other things other than just bareback riding and rodeo. So it's been a lot of fun for me. Uh, very busy, but enjoying a structure, a uh, time schedule, and, and uh, just happy to be home with the kids more. When you're essentially like the Michael Jordan of bareback riding specifically, is it was it hard for you to come to this decision to retire? I mean, boxers, great boxers always say they retire and they come out of retirement. Michael Jordan came out of retirement. Was there anything that made you decide that, okay, I'm ready? Or was how difficult was that decision to come about? You know, it's uh, it's been on my mind for several years. There's And I was fortunate to have the dad that I did, and, and he always uh, – you know, was mentoring me and, and trying to give me the best advice. And he was always very uh, assertive about the bareback riding career is very short and you need to be ready for the end. Um, you need to know what you're going to be doing when you're done rodeo. And so you can stay focused and you, and your mind is occupied not to where uh, you don't know what you're going to be doing or, or what the, the next discipline to win at is. And so um I had, uh, I've had it on my mind for a while and, and had a few businesses going and they're to the point now where, um, they can pay for the cost of living and, and I need to, you know, uh, jump in from, from one discipline to the next. And, and that's where I was at. I was, I was ready to win in something else and, and structure my time around my family rather than structure my family around me and my career. Casey, you know, you obviously look back at all you've done in the sport of rodeo. You haven't had much separation from it, but as you do look back, you know, is there something that sticks out to you in your career is, you know, something you'll never forget or a moment that's, uh, that'll stick with you for the rest of your life? Oh, there's so many. I don't even know where to begin from. The memories of being on the back of a horse to accomplishing my goals to running into acquaintances and friends. And, uh, there's a lot of things that I'll miss for sure. But, uh, Friendships, I'll, I'll I'll miss a lot um, with the rodeo contractors and gate guys or people at the strip and shoot. But the the part so far that I've missed is that I I I I miss it all. But there's a part that I miss that uh, it affects who I am sometimes, and that is the 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 getting on a bucking horse and competing. That part of it, um, you know the the adrenaline dump that it is, the focus that it takes, um, the pressure that I put on myself to, or on myself to go and make a perfect ride and win. Um, that, that aspect I do miss. I, I miss the, the pressure that I put on myself and the, the things that I, I do to do that. And then the moment of nodding my head in those situations is, is something that I find myself probably replaying in my mind more than anything else. Casey and I know more than once you had to make a ride in like a 90 point ride to win a world championship. I know in Arlington, you had to do that on a re-ride. I know you had to do it in Vegas when you won your last title, if I'm thinking right. What goes through your mind? And I tell people, it's kind of like Joe Montana. Guys can go to a different level. There, there's certain guys can do it. And it's a rare breed of guy. What allowed you to be able to maybe calm yourself down and make the amazing ride to become a world championship in round 10 and the biggest moments of your career? Um, if there was one thing, I would, I would say my preparation, um, the process to, to get there and the, the things that I did to, to put myself in that situation and, and dreaming of being in that situation. So I am familiar with it when the time comes. Um, probably um, experience um, would have to go into that too, but but probably um, my preparation, the process, and that's something that I learned to love as my career 
uh, aged, I guess you could say. I I love the preparation of getting ready for the NFR and big rodeos and uh, pushing my body before I ever got there. And then, you know, you, you talk a little bit about that, uh, that preparation, you know, has things changed for you now? Obviously uh, you're doing something different, but does it feel weird to not have that preparation? Or are you still keeping yourself busy, you know, working out, trying to stay focused on that next end goal for you? Yeah, I've, uh, you know, with bareback riding to be the best, it, it took a strict workout routine and um, with business, um, I figured, find out that uh, accomplishing the hardest things first in the day uh, just kind of let you show off your talents, like riding a bucking horse the last three or four seconds when you feel like you got the ride under control. And so with business, I've, 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 uh, kept a really strict workout routine. And, and the thing that I was a little bit worried about when I retired is the motivation to stay in the gym and stay fit. And, um, uh, I don't hurt and I don't have to go out every weekend and get busted up. And so I've never felt this good. I've, been getting on bucking horses since I was 11 years old and then making a living at it since I was 16 and I haven't been on since September and I've never felt this good in my life. I, I feel like a dang 16 year old kid as good as I feel. No, no bumps or bruises. <laughs> when you fall in the footsteps of your father, obviously he's in the pro rodeo hall of fame. Sometimes there's pressure with that, obviously falling in the footsteps. Did you ever imagine though that, I mean, not only did you fall in the footsteps that you're, a six-time world champion and the best ever. I mean, I, I'm assuming when you think back at that, it, it, do you never did you ever think that could be something that would happen? I did. I started believing in myself and thinking that those were possibilities and my goals were achievable. But now, looking back on it, it's more unbelievable. Um, when I was in the situation and trying to achieve those those goals and those dreams, it was nose to the grindstone, and and you didn't really look up the goals were the goals and you crossed them off and it was on to the next one, even with the world championship. But now being retired for, you know, almost six months and looking back on my career, it's, uh, doesn't seem real. It doesn't seem it, it's, it's, a uh, it's a humbling thing to look back on. And, and, and then my dad's career and the legacy that he started and the importance that he, um, you know, by example, the field name, what it meant to him and, and uh, for, for me to be able and, and God to, to allow me to, to continue the legacy is, is a humbling, humbling thing. And um, it's, uh, it's weird to me now being done and, and still being recognized and, and doing podcasts and things like this, I, I guess being the champion and I never thought what would come after. And so these things are all still kind of, maybe surprising to me a little bit, I guess you could say. Casey, I know you're not really separated much from, from your riding career, but do you see at any point, you know, here in the next five, 10 years where it's 15, 20, when your kids get older, of getting back into rodeo, you know, not necessarily riding bucking horses, but, uh, you know, having a chance to maybe help out with younger generations of, of bareback riders or maybe to look into the stock contracting side of things. Have you, have you thought about that at all? Um, yeah, I think about it all, all the time now. Uh, my nephew that's 15 years old is riding bareback horses and uh, the younger two Bronx and Mavericks are riding bulls. And my brother loves checking out stock and sending me Instagram videos. This one's nice. All, what do you think of that? Do you know this person? We need that one. And uh, so, you know, it crosses my mind and uh, my daughter, my oldest one, Chamberlain, she's starting to, to kind of like breakaway rope and really looks up to Jackie Crawford and uh, think she's amazing. And so if she's looking up to people like that and wants to do it, I'll support it all, all the way. And and if the kids don't want a rodeo, whatever it be, we'll, we'll, I'll teach them the tools to, to be able to be a winner, but I might not have quite the advantage as rodeo. Casey, when you, when you go about life now, does eight seconds seem almost like surreal? Do you live? I mean, before you were living your life, eight seconds at a time, everything you did was based on a paycheck, eight seconds at a time. Now you walk around an office, you probably, you know, walk around for five minutes and things happen. Does it, does that part of it seem odd in some rare way? <laughs> for sure. Making money at eight seconds a time at a time compared to net 90 is a, that's a big difference. <laughs> so it, but the, the, the same thing, it's the same role. It's walk in the office with confidence, just like I'm, set my gear bag behind the shoots. You know, it's, it's game time. I'm walking to the office. I got some tasks that I got, I got to accomplish and, you know, don't let distractions happen and get the job done. 
KCB, yeah, no doubt about it. And you've done that throughout your entire career. And we can't bring you on the shoot bosses without letting you get a little free advertisement out of us. Tell everybody what you're doing now, you know, what your companies look like and uh, where they can reach out to some of your stuff and stay connected with the, the greatest bareback rider of all time. Well, I sure appreciate this opportunity. So Shad and I, my brother, we own War Bonnet Cowboy Hats. It's operated by him out in Roosevelt. Um, it's a fun business. Me and him get to stay in contact. We're best friends, but to do business together and where he's at in life with his accident, is it's a lot of fun and enjoy that. And then power pro, um, since, uh, retiring, I've been able to focus on that quite a bit. We've changed the bottle up on the lotion. So it's not such a bugger to get out. It's more of a jar, uh, our 1500 full spectrum is doing really well. We're coming out with some new pre-workouts here pretty quick. And then a coffee that's pretty interesting we've been working on for a while. It's infrared roasted. It takes out all the carcinogens. So uh, it's an, it's a healthy coffee, I guess you could say. I'm looking forward to that product. And then my where my main focus is now is KTK Fulfillment. Um, it's a fulfillment center, shipping center. Uh, we do kitting, uh, pack out. Anybody, uh, e-commerce companies, uh, you know, that has products, we'll store them and ship them for you. We've, we've got a 90 99.9% accuracy on all of our packages outgoing. Um, we're up to about 300 a day right now. We want to get up to 5,000 by July. So if you guys are looking for a fulfillment, hit KTK up. It's a, it's a fun business. It's fast paced. Um, and like I said, when I show up to the office, it's, it's a lot like a bareback ride. It, there's a lot of moving parts, um, a lot going on. So you got to stay focused while you, uh, while you have the opportunity in the arena. And I know Tracy talked about that Power Pro like it changed yeah. his entire life. So Yeah, that Power Pro helps. It works. I used it for a while. <laughs> I haven't used it in a while. I'm going to have to get my mitts on some more Power Pro, but it does work. It helped me. I, I can speak from experience. It yeah. helped me. Well, I sure appreciate that. And it's fun to hear that it's a product that helps people. And so, you know, it's it's a passion of mine to help people. And it's it's cool to see and hear testimonies like yours. Well, Casey, we really appreciate you jumping on to the shoot bosses with us. We know you're a busy guy, so take it 10 minutes. Uh, you know, we, we can't thank you enough for jumping on the show here with us, man. Yeah, great seeing you guys, and thanks for the opportunity again. Keep them bucking, Casey. Keep them bucking. <laughs> there it is, Casey. Adios. Yeah, there it is, Casey Field, Tracy. And just an overall great guy. But you can just see how he kind of carried that championship mentality into what he's doing now. You know, the guy was a winner inside the arena. He's a winner outside the arena. When you have DNA like Casey Field, I mean, you're 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 just it's a different type of DNA. You're a world champion six times over, but when you do things in life, it's that same drive. I mean, those they have that same desire and that same passion. Obviously, he's involved in the business world and I'm not wouldn't be surprised at all if he's massively successful yeah. just because of the drive he has and the people he's going to surround himself with and has surrounded himself with. So, it's great to see and the bigger message that I like is that he got ready for retirement. Yeah before retirement While so he's still he, so going, when you're yeah. still riding and you're still at your peak level and you know he could easily probably make the nfr again but you are ready to retire and ready to go into business a lot of guys unfortunately they retire they call it quits and then what's next and then mm -hmm. then you have then they have a hard time to know what's next he knows what's next and i know it's going to be a great future for him yeah no doubt about it so we appreciate the six-time world champ jumping on with us here on the shoot bosses we will have so many more great guests coming your way here in season two so make sure you stay with us on youtube all your favorite podcast platforms that's going to do it for this episode till then on rodeo <laughs>